um, the season two trailer and, and the episodes I've watched, um, to quote the scholar Gwen Stefani, the shit is bananas. <laughs> shit is bananas. It really is. I mean, yeah. We, I mean, we aim to make a bigger, darker, better season. And yeah, I, I mean, it, I think one of the benefits in shooting in a pandemic was that there was no lack of intensity to draw from. We were all kind of going through our own shit, you know, off camera. And then our characters were living their shit on camera. And there was kind of this very strange blur between fantasy and reality. Yeah, I mean, um, that's sort of uh, what's great about Motherland and is, is even though I know you you filmed season one far off from the pandemic when there was, you know, um, it still feels, um, it felt relevant. I mean, we were in quarantine and there was this witch plague going around yeah. Uh, yeah. and there was a plague going around in the pandemic. We didn't know it at the time, we swear. <laughs> when we shot it, we didn't know. <laughs> and then, you know, now this season, um, season two um it sort of sets like factions uh, against one another in a sense as well um so it mm -hmm. also has um continued that great um sort of trail that motherland <laughs> continues to blaze and i wanted to talk a little bit about um how that has sort of felt for you as well what just having a season two or <laughs> well, just how the story's progressed it's just how these um, themes continue to be just so so relevant, um, not only, um, you know, obviously to the pandemic, but mm -hmm. um, the emotionality of it as well. Yeah, I mean, season one, you know, we, we didn't come off based on a comic book. It was out of our creator's genius mind, um, this world, these characters. And setting a stage for a new show is always, it's a, it's a challenge. It's like, can we, can we, can we get what's up here out there? And will the heartbeat that we feel of the show and these characters resonate with the world? Because that's, you know, you, as artists, you go and you, we shoot for a few months and then there's post and it gets edited and cut together. And then you're watching it as an audience member and seeing the world respond. And that's always really the intriguing bit. So first of all, we're just so grateful that it did resonate and what a time it, it resonated in. I think the pandemic made the story more relatable, even though it's a fantasy genre, somehow I think everyone can could kind of see bits of themselves in every character. Um, and that's how I felt when I read the script for the first time was this feeling of, I'm seeing kind of all the spectrum of humanity in this world. And I just wanted to be a part of it. I just wanted to, you know, literally climb into Elliot's mind and this new vision that he had created. So, yeah, I mean, to have a second chapter of that, to see how the world kind of expands now beyond base walls and that, new characters are now introduced, uh, taking the journey that much further. And the trio, I think the shift of focus from season one being strangers to sisters, witches to warriors, now the focus is kind of pulled on individual responsibility and power. So yeah, it's like every character is kind of going through their own personal heaven and hell. It was just a joy to go back to work and to, we kind of shot quite a lot of it blind in that we'd gotten an overview from Elliot who teased a lot as to kind of where the story was gonna progress, but the extent of that we didn't know until the script was in our hands and we were doing the table reading. Um, okay. So yeah, and I mean, because of the pandemic we were doing it, you know, with all the circumstances around shooting changed. It was, we shot for longer. It was seven months, not five months. We had a brilliant health and safety team kind of chaperoning us through the procedures and the protocols and making sure everyone was safe. Um, we had an incredible cast and crew who was 
just pouring everything that they had into it um, while being in this pandemic and life continues, you know, outside. And yeah, it was just a very strange, quite isolated experience. Even though we were all back in Vancouver shooting, it was so different. Um, but I think we were just so grateful to all be back working, um, living in the world that we adore and the characters who really hold our hearts and being back with my co-stars in one form or another. Often it was over screens, you know, and behind masks and shields and we weren't allowed to touch or hug or cuddle but you know, just to have their presence and to feel like we're part of something bigger, like our characters, you know, it was just awesome. Okay, so um, to get to the season two part of things, um, I mean, the symbols um, that we see on the Motherland season two poster um, says a lot about each unit member. Um, and mm -hmm. Tally sort of seems to represent this, um, as we talk about connections um, between like an upper and lower type of world, if you look at what the symbols actually do. The totally. Um, yeah. And there's, there's defense and trustworthiness uh, on one side, but then there's also confusion and destruction. Uh, and mm -hmm. I know how the, the show is really riddled so much in, in metaphors. Um, and of course, you know, Tally has this, um, this bitty connection that sort of ends up lingering after she reverts um, from Alder and then it becomes these kind of haunting breadcrumbs in a sense. Yes. Uh, we get a little bit of Motherland, a little bit of Nancy Drew <laughs> this season. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly how I, I mean, it didn't, it didn't hit me immediately, but I did. I was like, I am like, it's like a Nancy Drew or what Elliot coined the bloodhound of truth. You know, she's just after answers, but she's really living questions that are so much bigger than her. And a lot of the answers have been buried in the past and in general Alder's psyche and which she just happens to have a key to that door. Um, yeah, but I just, I loved how you put it. The, the dark breadcrumbs and they just kind of they they continue to be dropped throughout until episode nine and ten everything kind of coalesces you know it's going you know you can feel it's building there <laughs> well, i'm i'm excited because uh tally can see sound now and she has these new abilities that even oh. um are uh obviously you know opening up to her as much as it's opening up to us uh, what do I you think because I I was I was uh, opposing this to Elliot like you know is it just because they're in war college and they have had now some field experience in battle arguably actually they're probably more experienced than anyone else in war college like they've actually had first-hand hand-to-hand right. combat um so they've kind of in my mind already graduated to the next step but they're like these enigmas so like I guess we just you know, they've kind of slot now back into um, the system at Fort Salem and this is the next chapter, but they're kind of in a way outliers, they're kind of beyond that. Um, and I always thought that Tally's expansion and depth into her power of seeing sound now probably was maybe like an acceleration due to the Biddy connection. Cause it's just, yeah, that connection is very much like linking but on a much more intense psychological level. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Storm of dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited to see um, where, it, where it leads her and, and if there's any further abilities beyond uh, seeing sound that may develop and, uh, and see where, where, where we can follow and also divert from these three. I, yeah, oh yeah. And um, I can't wait for the audience to meet the new characters. Yes. The so new characters exciting. Are it's like holding in a pee. Like when you really need a pee, you just want to like, <laughs> you want to, you're just like, can I tell, can I do it, please? <laughs> no, <clears throat> we have to maintain composure, lips are sealed. <laughs> I'll see you on Twitter though. Yes.